Tournament Championship Game, Championship Week, presented by 7-Up. I'm Dave Sims with Jay Billis. And it's a 5-5 ball game off of that bucket by Lamar Odom. Here's Karcher. That won't go. Rebound goes off of Tavares Bell. And here's a look at the folks on the floor right now. Lamar Odom, Reynolds, Dean, Clay, Bell, and Murphy for the Rhode Island Rams in their road blue. And Temple, top seed in the A-10. Karcher, Barnes, Lyde, Brokenborough, and Sanchez for John Cheney's ball club. Temple started out in their matchup zone, and right now, Rhode Island has gone to a zone off the out-of-bounds under a 2-3. Temple beat Rhode Island twice this year in Philadelphia on January 16th, 76 to 63. Here's Barnes inside, had it knocked away. Temple will maintain position. Second time they beat him. February 6th at Providence, 72-63. Here's what you've missed. Both teams pretty even right now. Three-point numbers for Temple. Not a great three-point shooting team. Here's Pepe Sanchez. That won't go, so they're now 0 for 5. Karcher kept it alive. Reynolds Dean had that rebound. He brought it back over his head to bring it down, and Karcher just knocked it away. Good hand. Sanchez, they still haven't hit from three-point range. Reynolds Dean brings it back for Rhode Island. Nice pass inside. Luther Clay. How about Reynolds Dean showing the handle at 6'7 and a power forward earlier this season? Rhode Island could get absolutely nothing in transition. Now they are a great transition team. Nice pass inside. Barnes flushes it. It's been like that all week here in Philadelphia. Well, Barnes has averaged 15 points, 13 and a half rebounds in this tournament. A lot of juice on that pass from Lamar Odom. Wait till you see what he can do if you're just seeing him for the first time. Seven all is our scores. We take our first break. 1544 to go. And the first union spectrum. We're back in a moment. Standing with their big people, especially Lamont Barnes. Lamont Barnes averaging 15 points, 13 rebounds in this tournament. He has got 16 offensive boards. And for Rhode Island, it has been the Lamar Odom Show. One of the only people in America in college basketball capable of a triple-double. Lamar Odom averaging 19 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists throughout this tournament. And he hasn't really, Dave, shot the ball as well as he's capable of shooting it. It's scary to think what he could do. No question about it. Last night, Lamar shot 4 of 15, 17 points with the 11 assists and 7 boards. Karcher finally bangs home a 3. 10-7, Temple. Well, the more Mark Karcher plays, he's getting in much better condition than when he started this season. And his game has just really come around. He's not hesitating to take that three. He takes smaller guys down low. Terrific player. Steal by Pepe Sanchez. What else is new? Had eight steals against Virginia Tech. That's an Atlantic 10 tournament record. And followed up with only three <laughs> against Xavier. I guess they ought to take him out of there if he's not going to do better than that. Parcher deep hoist won't go. Lyde kept it alive. How about Barnes with the loose ball? And Lyde kept it alive and yet another offensive board. Temple now one of nine from three-point range. Murphy in a hurry. Pull up. That's a three. Won't go. Rebound Lyde. And he shoved Reynolds. Check that. He shoved Luther Clay into the photographers. Pepe Sanchez has perhaps the best hands of any defender in the country. Stays low, always goes after the ball, and once again, that was all leather, and he gets the break started. He played soccer in his native Argentina, and John Cheney says not only does he have good footwork, he plays very much like a goalie. Does a great job. Odom steps into one, and he's got it. Great, smooth-looking shot by the package, Lamar Odom. Okay, smooth is the operative word for Lamar Odom. He just glides on the court. It may not look like he is working hard. That's just because he is so smooth out there. Great news for Rhode Island. Odom, three for three, eight points. Good start. A fine Karcher, foul line jumper. No good. Rebound, Clay had his hands on it. Lost it. Barnes, another flush. He walked. But they're going to get him with the travel. And he better watch out with... The referees very frustrated that he got the walk call after going so hard after the offensive board. Illinois leading Ohio State with a run there half. Tell you what, when you thought there couldn't be any more upsets. Reynolds Dean to Murphy. Tavares Bell, great athlete, good jumper. Reynolds Dean does get the iron. 
Well, he missed it, but that's where open shots are going to come. You've got to flash middle on ball reversal. That's where openings are in this Temple zone. Temple goes with a 1-3-1 matchup zone, and that means Lamont Barnes is going to be running the baseline. John Cheney a little bit worried about wearing out his big guy having to run side to side down on the baseline. Boy, you better be ready to catch with Odom. When he delivers a pass with that left hand, it could be anyway. <laughs> Looks like he could be up in the 80 mile an hour range. Reynolds Dean hit this shot a lot last night. Part of the big success. Nice steal by Tavares Bell. Boy, has he really come along as a player? Had a great ball game last night in covering Shante Rogers. An unenviable task, but he handled it very well and limited Rogers. Especially in the first half, Rogers had only five points. Sure, and that on the heels of what he did to uh, Donny Carv LaSalle the night before, held him to about three for 15. Murphy, that won't go. Rebound Luther Clay. Look at Luther Clay go up over the top. Whoa, look out. A little too much prosperity. Well, that Reynolds fan Dean. in the third row was open in defense of <laughs> Luther Clay. Reynolds Dean comes back limping just a little bit. Keep an eye on that. His shot selection, Temple woeful so far from long range. Oh, well, John Cheney, nice. There's another look inside. Block, Tavares Bell. And it remains Rhode Island ball. Sanchez really sees the floor. Look at him thread the needle because Tavares Bell had turned his head, but Bell came from behind and made a spectacular play to save a basket. 10-10 ball game. Rhode Island needs to win this game, win the championship to get into the NCAA tournament. Yeah, Jim Herrick is politicking for them to get in otherwise, but they've only beaten four winning teams on the season. No iron on that one for Odom. Put back. A lot of bounces. Cleared down by Live. What a steal. Steal by Murph. But he stepped on the end line. And John Cheney incensed with Mark Karcher that he did not make a pass fake first to clear out. Uh-oh, John's taking his jacket off. Sure sign in Philadelphia. He's ready to go to war with his own guys. You always protect the ball. You're a Temple player like it's your life. He that did this last night, too. Yeah, that basketball is gold to John Cheney. And he will not allow his team to be loose with the ball. When Mark Karcher finally gets this rebound, all he's got to do is make a pass fake, and he'll be able to see what Preston Murphy's going to do. Either runs back down the court or shoots into the passing lane. And John Cheney is incensed. I wonder if he gives Mark Karcher his dry cleaning bill after this. <laughs> Tell you what, that is it. You heard a little murmur in the crowd. It happened again last night. It was a little difficulty. And John took his jacket off, and a fan said, uh-oh. Well, I'll tell you, John Cheney wears beautiful suits, lovely ties. I mean, he wears top-of-the-line stuff, and he does not treat his clothes very well, to say the least. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Four out of five in the championship games here in the Atlantic 10. One and four against UMass. Beaten Rhode Island once back in 88. Little one, two, two, or three, two zone here. Sanchez over the top. He knocks one down. And that's the shot he's got to hit. Otherwise, Rhode Island is going to continue to pack down on Temple's big guys inside. Lamont Barnes, Kevin Wide. They're going to make Temple prove it from the outside. No doubt about it. Sanchez won for eight yesterday. Tip Vincent in the game right now. Number 13 for Rhode Island. Here's Odom. Three ball from the side. Oh, bad miss again. They had a lot of bad misses last night. Big Ed Brown, the people's choice in Rhode Island's in the game. Number 11. Barnes won't go. Tip won't go. Lied is there. Lied lays it up. And the foul. Dave, Ed Brown does a terrific job for this Rhode Island team. That's one area where he hurts them, though. He does not run the floor very well. And Lamont Barnes beat him all the way down the floor. You can see this is after the initial miss by Lamont Barnes. And how many people get up two and three times after the ball like Lamont Barnes does? And then Kevin Lyde comes in to clean it up when his older teammate can't do it. The young guy steps in. <laughs> Rebound to Odom, who picked up his second foul. So uh, keep that in mind. And then Kevin Lyde is saying, how about it, Gramps? I'm cleaning up your misses. <laughs> Kevin Wyatt really developed his left forearm. Had a big problem with that for a lot of the year. But another bad miss. Ed Brown sent back by Barnes. All A-10 defensive team two years running, and that is why. Karcher steps in. That's wide right. He knew it as soon as he let it go. Live keeps it alive. Got to get Murphy. on the floor. They got three on two. Murphy inside. Vincent. And it blocked. He stepped on the get a traveling violation. What a sequence for the Temple defense. Eric can't believe it.
Pepe Sanchez on the board finally from long range. Temple building a five point lead. It is built in November and melts in April. 100 miles above the Arctic Circle. Temple over Rhode Island. Dave Sims and Jay Billis. Jay, no worse for wear from New York, Delaware. The America East. Good job. And pretty good start here for Temple up by five. Well, Temple's done a nice job trying to get the ball inside to their big guys. That's where their advantage is, and they're going to keep pounding it in and keep testing the big people from Rhode Island. Welcome, Burroughs, Sanchez, Karcher, Lyde, and Barnes starting still on the floor for Temple. Brody back into man to man. They're going to double down when the ball goes inside, try to get a kick back out. Inside the Barnes. And there goes Murphy. Sanchez, they get it back. Step back jumper. Ball go. Tip Vincent rebound. Well, Tip Vincent has done a nice job in this tournament for Rhode Island. He has really matured as a player. Vincent in the corner to Murphy. Steps through, finds, found a gap and scored right over wide. Can you, tell Murphy, can you tell now that Preston Murphy is healthy? He started out the season with two severely sprained ankles. He went the longest time without even being able to practice. Archer won't go. Big rebound, Luther Quay. Luther Quay was huge last year in the run to the final eight for Rhode Island. He had 11 rebounds against Kansas, and that was no slouch mm -hmm. front line that the Jayhawks had with Rafe LaFrance and Paul Pierce. That's a game that was under 10 to play here. A-10 tournament championship game. Good ball movement. Here's Odom. Again, a bad miss. Air ball. Shot about three last night. But it was great ball reversal to get it over to him open, and the defense just couldn't recover. Archie to Barnes. It just steps in. Back to the zone. Down to wide against Ed Brown. Ed Brown bodies up. That's up Sanchez. He didn't even hit that one. Won't go. Rebound to Ed Brown. And a nice block out. That's gone. Ed Brown cannot make the outlet passes against Temple like he made in the first two rounds of this tournament. Pepe Sanchez will pick him clean. Sure will. You have got to give the ball to a guard without throwing it down court. Pepe Sanchez will get all of those. Boy, he's in the passing lane in a heartbeat. But I'll say this for Ed Brown. He has a great outlet. He's, we've seen that the last two games of the wins against LaSalle and GW. Jim Harris is the best outlet pass he's ever had. Nice pass. Yes, it was. Luther Clay, look at that acrobatic shot. Are you kidding me? So much for that bad calf, huh? No kidding. Luther Clay was on crutches last night after the semifinal game. That strained calf that kept him out of the Fordham game, or at least limited his effectiveness in that game, flared up again. He just wanted to stay off of it, so he hobbled around on crutches, didn't come out for warm-ups, but well, he came out to play. And reversing as Murphy's doing the scramble, doubles down, won't go, short on the shot there, and Ed Brown with another easy rebound. For Rhode Island to within one. I'll tell you, David, if Rhode Island could script it, they would want Pepe Sanchez shooting jumpers. And Brown for the lead. And the play was made by Tip Vinson because he penetrated with one dribble right into a gap, drew the defense to him, and left it off to Ed Brown for the easy basket. 6-0 run for the Rhode Island Rams. Inside, live, shoots over Brown, won't go. Loose ball comes to Vincent. Ed Brown made a difference in the LaSalle game. So did Vincent. Sure yeah. did. Ten points, four rebounds, a couple steals against a very good George Washington team that Rhode Island just dismantled. That was just an absolute ratio there. That was amazing. The thought was good, but the execution wasn't. Here comes Sanchez. Brokenborough with room. That goes. It's a three for Rashid Brokenborough. Temple back on top, 18-16. Murphy over to Vincent now. Now Temple going to more of a 2-3 look. 
So Lamont Barnes will not have to run the baseline as the one on the bottom of the 1-3-1. One, one. Vincent steps around his man and scores. Playing with a lot of confidence. He really, Vincent, you're exactly right there, Dave. That is the key for Tip Vincent, is his confidence level. When he goes up for a shot, he goes up to make it. Now, right now, he is trying to shadow Rasheed Brokenborough around low screens. Live. Not having nearly the operating room he's had the last couple of days. Inside Barnes in a hurry. Odom's got to be careful. He's got two fouls. Lamar with the rebound. Lamont Barnes not as strong going to the basket there as he usually is. He needs to be stronger. Vincent up top picked off. Karcher. And Karcher's got a breakout. Let's see. Not a good foul, but he, hey, he knocked off, prevented him from making the deuce. So maybe it was a worthwhile foul for Tip Vincent. Well, Mark Karcher waited for Tip Vincent in order to get that foul. You could see him looking over his left shoulder as he was dribbling down the court, in part because he is not particularly fleet of foot. But you can see him looking over his shoulder there. He can feel Tip Vincent coming back, and then he goes right into him to draw that contact. The only thing he didn't do was complete the play, and that's why he was a little bit upset. This guy is pure score, over 3,000 points in high school. Get him for you in a hurry, too. He's struggling right now, one of eight from the field. And that won't go for him at the line on the season. Carter, 63%. Rounds Dean back in for Lamar Odom, and Kevin Lyde will get a breather. Ron Rollerson is in. And how hot was Mark Karcher in the opening round against Virginia Tech? He was six of eight from three. First half. In the first half. <laughs> Virginia Tech still trying to figure out how to guard him. He had a lot of open room, too. Makes a second free throw. Temple takes a one-point lead. 6-18 to go first half in the 8 10 tournament championship game. Good pass from Odom. Sets up Luther Clay with a beauty. I won, and how did Lamar Odom get a pass through this 1-3-1 zone? Well, the reason is pretty simple. Look at Kevin Live. His arms are down by his side. If they're out, that pass cannot be made. The other guy over here does not have his arms open either, and that's how Luther Clay right here gets that ball. All right, you have got avenue. to have your hands up. Found the shoot. It's Reynolds Dean with Vincent Murphy, Ed Brown, and Luther Clay for Rhode Island. And a reach in on Brokenborough. Kevin Lyde icing up that left shin. I haven't seen him with uh, that ice pack on any time this week, so maybe that's something that's happened earlier in the game. Well, his left forearm has been injured as well, sure. and that kept him out of a couple of games. But uh, John Cheney's not going to take that as an excuse for not having his hands up in the air. And making himself, <laughs> he made himself 6-1. Sure enough. But Kevin Lyon has got some wingspan. You've got to keep your hands up in the zone because it's like throwing the ball through a forest. It's almost like you're on cue there. Ed Brown rebounds. Ed Brown, they're getting for a travel. Yeah. They went, those are two big bodies in there wow. with Brown and Rollerson. It's like a sumo wrestling match. Been there. Rollerson, 290 plus. Ed Brown, put a question mark on it. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on five and a half to go. One point lead for Temple. Rody back to man to man now. They're going to double inside, but only off of one on Barnes. They're not, probably not going to double off Rollison. They're going to give him a look. Rollison outside to Keaton Sanders, who struggled from the field. Not a good outside shooter. He came in first half yesterday. Well, without Wadley, Sanders is having to play more minutes on the perimeter. Rollison jump hook short. Kept alive. Ed Brown's got it. And Ed Brown, much more intelligent after grabbing that rebound. He gets it to a guard, doesn't try to make a long outlet that's going to get picked off. Murphy over the top. Murphy hits. Preston Murphy. 21-19, Rhode Island. Boy, do you think he loves seeing Temple when he can shoot threes? He went 8 for 9 for 28 points. 8 for 9 from 3. That's the second best three-point shooting performance of the season. The first was by Marcus Wilson of Evansville. He went 9 for 9 against East Tennessee State. Rollison, they come to double on him. Just want to make him give it up. That's moving first half. Rollison wheels through, goes up, half block. Here's Keaton Sanders. Went 0 for 3 yesterday from the field. Replacing Karcher. They'll restore some order here. Get it back outside the Barnes. But if you don't grab that defensive board, then you got to play defense all over again. Got to finish the play. They can roll. Barnes got it up and in. Boy, did a good job. Frexling his body. 
here in the lane. Seven points for Barnes. Well, Lamar Barnes just has great hands, not only on the catch, but soft hands on the shot. Just a terrific touch. Murphy way outside. That won't go. Brown yet another board. He's got six. Vincent. Luther Quay, is he looking active or what? Rollerson comes over to hack him, but Luther Quay is determined as we've seen him these last two days. It's been outstanding. 3.48 to go. And more championship week. It's coming up on the Deuce. It's later on today. The Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Championship at 7 p.m. from the Richmond Coliseum, South Carolina State against Florida and them. And then at 10.30, it'll be the big Sky Conference title game, Weber State against Northern Arizona. ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. Luther Clay. Luther Clay's going to the line because of something that Tip Vinson did. He put the ball on the floor with one hard dribble into the gap of that zone. And he drew the defense to him and he was able to lay it off to Clay. Luther can't get that one. Barnes rebounds for the out. You know, one 21 thing, all. One thing about Temple Zone right now, they've got some players out on the court that are younger. Rollerson not used to playing this zone. And therefore, his slides are not quite there, sometimes caught out of position. And other guys have to cover up, and so the zone is not as effective as it normally would be. This is not a great outside shooting club at, at this moment. Brokenborough and Sanchez are the better of the five, but Sanders not going to be much of a threat. Well, six Broken, seconds. Brokenborough is streaky. Brokenborough with twos, Pepe with one. He got it. No, he didn't. Shot clock violation. Temple's had their share this week. Nicely done by Rhode Island. 21 all. John Cheney mulling it over. Imagine TV. You were supposed to look out for me, Joey. Here in the A-10 championship game, the Rhode Island Rams and the Temple Owls. Don't forget, big day tomorrow. NCAA Women's Selection Special presented by State Farm at 5.15 p.m. The Men's Tournament Selection Show at 6.30 Eastern. It's hosted by Chris Fowler, Dick Vitale, Digger Phelps, and Jay Billis. And then College Hoops tonight on ESPN2 as Quinn Buckner and Dave Feldman round out the 64-team field. Dave, skip passes can be very effective against the zone. Ball is right here. It's going to go over to Tip Vincent. When Tip Vincent catches it right here, he goes right into this gap. Very effective off the dribble. When he goes into the gap, he draws Lamont Barnes to him, and there is Luther Clay for the foul. We're under three minutes to play. Ed Brown open underneath. Murphy did sin. Ball reversal has been very effective. Now they see Ed Brown. Ed Brown on the catch, goes up and got hammered. Finally came back to him. Foul was on Keaton Sanders, his first. When you face a zone defense, especially one that matches up like this Temple zone does, you want to move the ball from side to side, make that defense move. The nice pass over the top because Ed Brown stayed behind the zone. And that allowed the zone to flatten out a little bit. And that pass was available on ball reversal. Ed Brown, a difference maker here in this tournament. And two points, six boards thus far. Transfer from St. John's, and you'll see St. John's a little bit later after our game in the Big East Tournament Championship game against Connecticut. Got a good look at Jim Herrick there. So many people have talked about Ed Brown's weight perhaps needing to lose some, but Jim Herrick said that he had a player years ago that played for him that had a similar weight distribution, and he had him lose a lot of weight, and he wasn't the same kind of player. He made him put it all back on, so he doesn't <laughs> say anything to Ed Brown. Probably because Ed Brown might smack him one. Ed, meal times are set on your schedule right here, so make sure you get that's here. right. And, you know, Ed Brown's a gourmet cook. Keaton Sanders with a three for Sanders, just his second three-point make of the season. He's two for eight on the year now. And that's the kind of cooking John Cheney likes to see. Up by two, corner jump by Vincent. Hine drives it home for three. That was Island back on top. And Dave, that middle is going to be open. When you get the ball to the middle, that'll collapse the zone. You look immediately outside to an open shooter. That is great execution by Rhode Island. Steps in, and Broken Burr scores. He went right into the teeth of the defense. And Antonio Reynolds-Dean wanted to charge on that play. So did Jim Herrick. Under two to play, first half. Odom, great two plays. And a traveling violation on Mr. Brown. 
He had a nice spin move yesterday home the baseline in the second half. Seven up halftime report coming your way. Chris and Digger take care of you with the SEC Big, Tw Big 12 top seeds have fallen, huh? Illinois moves on and three more tickets will get punched. Chris Fowler, Digger Phelps coming up in a few. Sanders. Luther Clay trying hard to get around Lamont Barnes, but Barnes staying wide. Here comes the double. Lamont Barnes has to make a quick decision when that ball comes inside. He's either got to make his move or pass it on back out when he sees the double team. You have to make that extra pass and find the open man because when Rhode Island comes over to double, somebody's going to be open with the chance for a shot. And taken away by Vincent. Here's Luther Clay. They wait for help. Gets it in the form of Murphy. Murphy shakes free. Hesitation dribble. Gives it to Luther Clay. He's in some trouble right now. And it'll reset. Rhode Island with the ball down one. Here's Murphy now to Luther Clay. Cross court to Odom, who's had a poor shooting here. Reynolds Dean. Five on the shot clock. Four. Odom up top. Long shot in the air. Tip attempt by Clay, and that's a shot clock violation. That was an air ball. So Odom shooting tonight has been nothing short of a disaster from long range. 44-4 to left. Well, that was a freshman mistake, Dave, and right now Jim Herrick pointing that out to him. He doesn't want Lamar Odom waiting that long to put it up from deep range. He can get that anytime. What he wants him to do is put the ball on the floor and use his athleticism to get to the basket. Lamar's missed his last four shots. His first three and his four misses have been some bad ones. Well, you don't want to rely too much on the jump shot. Wallison inside. He blew the layup, but Barnes is there to pick him up. Nine points for Lamar Barnes. Temple by three now. 22nd timeout call by Rhode Island. No defensive rotation for Rhode Island. Let's take a look at how you can beat this Temple zone. Look right here at Antonio Reynolds Dean. He is in the middle. When that ball goes to the middle, the defense will all collapse around him, and you'll get somebody open around here if you look hard enough. You can see here. Antonio Reynoldsdean wide open middle there he is 34 and he looks opposite to Tip Vincent and Vincent was ready to shoot when the ball got there Lamont Barnes could not get over there fast enough that's good basketball sure is Reynolds Dean real solid ball player explosive tip Vincent Vincent a freshman from New Britain Connecticut that's a great years ahead of him Reynolds Dean though struggling 0 for 5 from the field. Final 15 seconds, Vincent gets in, the pull-up, won't go, rebound Parcher who came back into the game. They have plenty of time to get a shot, and Vincent took that way too early. Temple by three, final five seconds, Parcher just off the bench, that's a three ball, he hit it! Mark Karcher just back into the game with a big three, a 7-0 run for the Temple Owls to end the first half to take a six-point lead. This was poor execution by Rhode Island, first in taking the shot too early and then in not covering the three-point shooter. And Tip Vincent came very close to fouling Mark Karcher as he hit that three. Almost like a five-point play. We go to halftime. Temple Owls lead at 31-25. Back to our ESPN studios and Chris Fowler. All right, Jay, uh, Dave, thanks. Funny to see Karcher out there. Not a classic-looking three-point shooter, but he can knock him down. Coming up on our 7-Up Halftime Report, we'll check in on the Illinois. Right here, time and score. They're down three. They've got 14.6 seconds left, and Tip Vincent is going in for a shot. They should go in either tied or still down three at worst. He took the shot too early. That allowed Temple the opportunity to take it the other way and get the last shot themselves. Then look at the nice penetration here. Tip Vincent has to come out and he's late and almost fouls Mark Karcher. Mark Karcher gets up the three. He winds up on his back. Now all of a sudden you're looking at a six point deficit instead of tied or at worst down three and Jim Herrick is still talking about the poor clock management and you don't mean to pick on Tip Vincent. He's just a freshman but those are the kind of mistakes that freshmen make. Tough way to go. Let's see how the second half Plays out. 
Temple's already beaten Rhodey twice this year. They knocked off Rhode Island back in 1988 in the A-10 Tournament Championship game. Rhode Island 0 for 2 in A-10 title games. Temple 4 and 5. There's Karcher playing with Barnes, Kepi Sanchez, Lyde, and Brokenborough. And for Rhode Island, they start the second half. Here's Karcher again. That went down and out. Lyde tip it. Quick outlet to Tavares Bell. Bell inside. Bell. Oh, oh. beautiful move. Oh, oh man. Can he get up? And he also changed directions just as he was going up in order to slip that charge. Gorgeous move to Forrest Bell. Tell you what, he's already a very good player. He's going to be a terrific player as he matures. You bet. Down to Barnes. Wheels inside. Goes up, got foul, and count that. Tell you what, you cannot reach in weak against Lamont Barnes. Here you see the play before in transition. Bell going up. Looks like he's going to charge in, but he just slips it. Oh, that's beautiful. And jumps sideways as he goes up. Just glides in. Now you can see as the ball goes into Barnes, Preston Murphy just gives a tiny little reach in there. And a big reach by Antonio Reynolds-Dean, but he wasn't able to knock the ball away. In fact, he fouled, and Lamont Barnes, with that strength down low, finished the play. Barnes can't get his dozen. They keep it alive, though. Live. Good job there. Archer backs it out. Murphy, Reynolds, Dean, Odom, Bell, and Clay for the Rhode Island Rams starting the second half. It's set up by Pepe Sanchez and a three ball by Brokenburg. Temple doing a very nice job of penetrating, drawing the defense to them, and then dishing off. And Jim Herrick asking the referees for an over the back call when Lyde kept that ball alive. That led to the open three. Bell gets it over to Murphy. Well, that was a five-point possession. Sure was. Almost a steal broken by Reynolds Dean under pressure. Lamar Odom lays it up. So Lamar Odom with the field goal. He's got 10 points. 36-29. Temple. I'll tell you what, when you talk about talent level, Lamar Odom tests the old theory that all men are created equal. <laughs> and it is absolutely unfair. Look at the numbers there tonight. Big change from last night when they got everything they wanted. And if they went in with an agenda, they could check every one of them off on that agenda. Every bullet point. Tell you what, you execute at the end of the half, and you grab that one offense or defensive boy, and Rhode Island is right in this game with the chance to take the lead right now. Down seven after the miss. Sanchez pretty much on the same page as Lamar Odom. And Herrick off the bench saying, hey, you don't have to high degree of difficulty, save it, especially with Sanchez around. You know, you might be able to thread the needle like that against a bad team. You can't do it against Temple. Temple gets back pretty well in transition. There's no way that Pepe Sanchez or Rasheed Brokenberg are going to let that pass go through. You know what? Murphy gets it back. 19 on the shot clock. Still plenty of time. Odom on the run. And they're going to count it. Thought maybe he was in the cylinder. Good goal for Lamar Odom. He's got 12, five points, the Temple lead. When Lamar Odom puts the ball on the floor and just take, takes one hard dribble, boy, is he a good player in there. Is he covering up ground there or what? Short jumper, Karcher won't go. They're going to give that to, okay, it's on Barnes. I thought they were going to call that on Luther Clay, and all he did was block out. Nothing wrong with that. Good call. How about Illinois? Knocks off number 12, Ohio State, by two. So three games under 500, they're going to the Big Ten title game. I'll tell you what, there are a lot of teams on the bubble right now that are going to be rooting for the favorite in that championship game. <laughs> if Illinois wins that and gets the automatic bid, all it does is knock yet another team off the bubble. Sure enough, Kent knocked one off already in the Mid-American because Miami of Ohio is going to the tournament. Mm -hmm. They had big wins over Tennessee, over Dayton, and they are in. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Murphy into the corner. The Bell steps in the gaps, finds his man. A flush by Luther Clay. Boy, nice that play was, by Bell. And wasn't that a nice play by Bell? Under control, puts the ball on the floor with his left hand, goes into a gap, and then delivers a nice pass to Luther Clay. And that calf couldn't be bothering him too badly. Not at all. 
Very impressed with Luke. Rhode Island, four or five from the field so far here in the second half. Wide. Big bump. Way strong on that one. Reynolds being taken away by Karcher. But they get him on the foul. Check that. That was knocked it out of bounds. Yeah, so Karcher stepped on the baseline. Stepped on the baseline. Here's the nice penetration by Tavares Bell. One hard dribble. He left his feet to pass, which is a little bit of a no-no, but you certainly like the result. Rhode Island down three. Temper trying to stop Rhode Island for the third time this year. Luther Clay jump shot. Rebound Karcher. Well, you want to get that ball into the middle, Dave, but not necessarily for a shot every time, just to collapse the defense and get it on back out. Again, Temple playing with that Quincy Wadley, the sixth man of the year in the Atlantic 10. They keep that alive. Karcher's got it. And they can't grab it. They just tip it up and keep going after it. So it's been very effective. They have. Jackie Sanchez steps in the one a little too strong. Barnes rebound. He got fouled going up. You know, Dave, offensive rebounding has gotten Temple to this point into the championship game in the first two rounds. Lamont Barnes, Kevin Lyde, and Mark Karcher combined for 30 rebounds. Half of them were offensive. That is a remarkable statistic. And Lamont Barnes continues to go hard to the offensive glass. He had 16 offensive rebounds in the first two rounds by himself. Barnes good with the first free throw. Lamont having a heck of a game here. He's got of the 13 offensive rebounds. Barnes has got five and Quincy Wadley on the left. Lynn Greer was lost in an orbital bone. And his left eye broke that in the Penn State game in December. Two great shooters. Right now, Temple doing quite well without them. Four minutes and change in. They've got a five-point lead, second half. Splendid-looking Lexi Penn. Put him on the line to prevent the three-pointer. He makes the first free throw. So now they're down to has to intentionally miss it. He does so off the scramble here. Michael Red, the shot to force overtime, doesn't go. Illinois, last place in the regular season, plays for the Big Ten Championship tomorrow. Madness indeed, Chris. Remarkable. 38-33 here in Philadelphia at the Atlantic 10 Championship game between the Owls and the Rams. Ron Kruger doing a very nice job with the very young basketball team, the Illini. And Corey Bradford, not a better freshman in the Big Ten. Here's Lamar Odom on the pass to Bell. Inside. Tell you what, that's a great recovery because Karcher got a piece of that and Bell was able to still get it home. And it was also a great flash into the middle. Rhode Island has done a very nice job of ball reversal and flashing into the middle. That collapses that zone and provides some very good opportunities offensively. Barnes over three and he scores. Well, they went after him with a fury, but he still wins that battle. Tavares Bell up in floor, turns it over, gets it back, calls a timeout. But the officials call jump ball. And possession now, let's see, it'll stay right here. Tomorrow night, join us here on ESPN National Hockey Night, the Detroit Red Wings against Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Steve Eisman, Sergey Fedorov, Brendan Shanahan for Detroit. And you'll see Paul Correa, Tamo Solani for Anaheim. The game's going to be seen in Anaheim, but not in Detroit. Kept alive, Luther Clay brings it down. And that was a good no call. Reynolds Dean foul as he goes up. I'll tell you what, this officiating crew has done a great job in this ball game. They're letting the kids play. Judicious use of the whistle. Jody Sylvester, Donnie Gray, there's Donnie Gray, and Joe DeMeo. Officiating crew here tonight. And all three of these officials will be moving on to officiate in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Major uh, contrast from last night for Reynolds Dean is. Take a look at the roadie bench. He's got his first point. I mean, last night was his best game of the year. Certainly oh. his most efficient game. Hard to believe that Antonio Reynolds Dean was left off the all defensive team for the second year in a row. I mean, you, I'm not sure you can find five better defenders or more versatile defenders than him. Well, Luther league. Clay made that happen. Luther Clay, what a great effort. He outquit Kevin Lyon. I'll tell you what, when Luther Clay comes to play, he is a terrific ball player. Using his quickness and athletic ability, look how high he goes up. 
and that's the second time he's had to jackknife in the air. The first time he completed the play, this time wasn't able to because of the foul on Kevin Lyde. Foul on Lyde, his first. Luther 67% at the line this year. And McDonald's All-American out of Ohio, originally committed to Purdue before transferring to Rhode Island when Al Skinner was the head coach. You're now top 20 player coming out of high school. Lyde, this time, let's see what he does. He's got Bell and gives it the Karcher this time. That's what he should do. I mean, putting your elbows up as a big guy is the equivalent of pitching inside in baseball. Oh, no question. Got to do it. Ball part of the game. I mean, you want to keep somebody off the plate, you brush him back. You want to keep somebody from reaching in, you give him an elbow in the throat. Well, Dave Sims and Jay Billis from the Don Drysdale School. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I've been stripped a lot on the left post. <laughs> And a turnover by Karcher. Yeah, Rhode Island will not go away. Oh, although, not at all. Although they did not handle the end of half situation very well, they certainly did not retreat because of it. And I think learned a valuable lesson for perhaps the postseason. Reynolds Dean with the score. Rhodey fighting for its NCAA tournament life here. They come in with an RPI of 74. They have got to win this game to get in. This, Dave, I think is where Quincy Wadley and Lynn Greer are missed the most because this Temple team looks tired right now. They have had no opportunity to take a blow. Broken bar, they go to Barnes. Can't make the grab, then recovers. Karcher with room, fires, and he hits. Mark Karcher, three ball, 43-39, Temple. That's where they got to go, but Karcher's exhausted. Karcher with 10, tip ball. Stay right here. Sanchez knocked it away from Bell. You cannot minimize how difficult it is to play three games in a row. Temple against the zone with some nice ball movement of their own, making the extra pass, and Pepe Sanchez delivering the nice chest pass right on the numbers. And Mark Karcher, all he had to do was catch it and shoot it. Odom to Murphy. Sanchez steals it. Again, what else is new? Breakout, Bell, great recovery. Outstanding. You know, you hardly ever see Pepe Sanchez do that. That was a horrible pass. I mean, that thing was quacking. It was such a lame duck. Good lead for Bell. He attacks the glass. Won't go. One-handed rebound. Oh, look out. Karcher falls. If he's hurt, I tell you what, Temple's in deep trouble. It's a break, so they can't stop play until it slows down. Now they can stop it. Tough break. Hopefully the young man is okay because boy he took a heck of a hard fall. That was not pretty. Not pretty at all. Chasing after the ball Lamont Barnes unable to corral it. It goes up in the air and Mark Karcher just trips right over to Boris Bell and he landed awfully hard. Yes he did. Trainer Richard Clark out to attend. They say basketball is a non-contact sport. Forget it. May not be a collision sport, but it's a contact sport. No question. And Temple can't afford to lose Mark Karcher right now simply because he is their best offensive player. And you can see Quincy Wadley out with that bruised left hand yesterday, unable to even hold the ball. Yeah, it came out at 5.30 last night before the game and was dribbling around and about a minute, minute and a half, and he said, you know what? Not going to happen. You know, he can not only score for them, he's a good streak shooter. He can put up some numbers. But he is also a terrific defender. He's a guy who can change the complexion of the game because he is so relentless and physical. Very well respected around the league as a serious threat defensively when he comes in. Karcher shooting three of 12. Jim Herrick, maybe he's got a break right here. Down four, 12 53 to go. Jim Herrick asking for a foul. Harrick has inserted Ed Brown into the lineup along with Tip Vincent. NASCAR Las Vegas 400 tomorrow live 2.30 Eastern on ABC Sports. NASCAR hits the jackpot. Second annual Las Vegas 400. Can anybody stop Jeff Gordon? Big question mark in NASCAR. Mike Martin and company will see them too. Ed Brown got to be a foul on him because one of the Temple players went about third row. It was on Vincent. Vincent pushed him. And don't forget ESPN 2. You've got NASCAR today, 2 p.m. Eastern, tomorrow on the Deuce. Forty-three thirty-nine. Here comes the double team. Good recognition. 
by Bruce for Karcher. He's expected to return. Rollerson, he powers up, rolls it home. Ronald Rollerson. Well, Rollerson has got some ability. Needs to get in a little bit better condition. But... And a blocking foul on Keaton Sanders as Lamar Odom was making his move. Jenny tagging the game Demopoulos to inherit. Do you expect, let me ask you this, Dave. Do you expect Odom to maybe try to put his mark on this game now? That it, you know, we're at 12 26 to go. They're down six. He hasn't shot well, but do you think it's time? I know you think you, we talked about this in the opening round. There comes a point where he's got to take it over. Well, that's what Jim Herrick wants him to do to assert himself and start taking over games. But you got to remember, he's still just a freshman. There's a guy, Preston Murphy, who is capable of taking over a game as well. He is a senior. The backcourt mate of Tyson Wheeler alongside Catino Mobley last year on a team that went all the way to the Elite Eight and was just an Arthur Lee steal and a Mark Madsen dunk away from the Final Four. Rollerson fumbles. He's in trouble. Taken away. Vincent knocked away from him. Off a foot. It's off a broken burst. Foot. It'll be Rody Ball. Carter back in for Sanders. Tip Vincent has had a very solid tournament. Just a freshman. He was expected to redshirt this year. But when Zach Marbury was ruled ineligible by the NCAA clearinghouse and Preston Murphy was down with those ankle injuries, he was forced into duty. And he has really matured into a very solid player. Brody, a long-range bomb away from tying it up. Boy, Lamont Barnes is just getting worn out having to run the bottom of that zone. He's got to go side to side every time this ball is reversed. Here's Murphy for the tie. Won't go. The tip by Broken Bar over to Sanchez, and here come the out. Barnes has got to be, better be in great shape. Loose ball, Vincent, now break out, here comes Odom. Numbers against him, takes it nonetheless, and he scores! Now he is just too slippery. What a ball handler. He's six foot ten inches tall. You forget that when he's got the ball, but there's no way to draw charge on that guy. He's too slippery. 14 for Odom. And we got a beauty here. Coming up on 11 to go. The A-10 tournament championship game. Inside to Barnes. Sanchez barely stays in bounds. Calls the timeout. And a good job to close by Preston Murphy. Temple was up. Was up by six. And out to 10.53 mark. On a one-point lead over Rhode Island. ATP Tour. 1999 Newsweek Champions Cup. From Indian Wells, California. You can look for Martina Hingis, Lindsay Davenport, Monica Sellis, Mary Pierce, Yana Novotna, Steffi Graf, Serena Williams, and many others. And for the men, all of the world's top 30 players expected to compete. So that means Sampras and Rios, Garicha, and Moya. Make sure you join us. And then the ESPN will bring you the WTA Tour 1999 Everett Cup. And that starts Wednesday. ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. Dave, how many times do you see a 6'10 guy handle the ball like this? The nice little hesitation move. And he just blew by Pepe Sanchez and then slipped the charge on Lamont Barnes and still able to finish with the soft little shot from about five feet out on the move. Well, when he went that first step, when he wants that first step, he eats up a lot of space. Sanchez with five and a shot clock, a big one. It's a deuce for Sanchez. Temple by three. I'll tell you what, if he could hit that shot consistently and get a little bit more consistent perimeter game, he is an NBA player because of all the other things that he can do. No doubt about it. Two for 11 on the shooting. Great pass inside. Luther Clay backs it out, shoots over. Won't go. Reynolds Dean rebound. How about the path to the basket that Reynolds Dean carved? Got a timeout. 10 25 to go. Pepe Sanchez now two for 11 after this fake puts Temple up by three. Kevin? The championship game. Take you back to 1988 in this A-10 final. Temple Owls, John Cheney, Tom Penders was the coach. This game played at the Coliseum at West Virginia. Tom Garrick was the story. He carried, he carried the Rhode Island Rams, but he scored 90 points for the tournament. There's a look at Tom Garrick. That's a 10 record. 50 points against Rutgers. 
Temple won that game in the championship 68 to 63. And Temple was the number one team in the country that year with Mark Macon, Tim Perry, Howard Evans, Mike Frieswick, and Rhode Island went to the Sweet 16 within one point of beating Duke going all the way to the Elite Eight where they would have played Temple. Second foul on Karcher. Hey, what, that, those were two terrific oh, teams. Yeah. Good run by both Penders and Jaden. Well, I remember Penders' team, that Rhode Island team. And they beat Missouri and Syracuse before losing to Duke by one in a game they probably should have won. And Temple probably should have beaten Duke as well, but Mark Macon went four for 27. Yep. Odom on the spin. One point game. He's got 16, and that's game high. When he's under control and does the simple things, there's nobody that can stop Lamar Odom. Here's Karcher teeing up a three. Short. Can't run it down. It's Rhode Island ball, so the Rams can take the lead on this possession. And Odom stepping up his game here, second half. Four out of five from the field. This right now is like a heavyweight fight after 14 rounds of body punches. These guys are just worn out, especially the Temple guys. Some big people have worked hard. Kevin Lyde back in the game. Murph, good look inside. And I tell you what, Karcher got away with a foul. What foul? They don't call it's not a foul. <laughs> Boy, there's a break for the Owls. Nice look inside. Karcher coming over the top a little bit, and the ball went off the leg of Antonio Reynolds-Dean, and he is a little disappointed in that call. Broken bar, nice lead for Lyde. Snuff. Back to Odom. Sanchez. The long arm of the law. Barnes muscling. Bounce. Got the score. That is a touch. 17 for Lamont Barnes. Lamont Barnes still running the baseline in that 1-3-1. He has to go side to side on ball reversal, and it just wears him out. Look how far he has to run. Yep. If he goes back to the other end of the court, he's got to run over there again. Then he's got to come back and body bang it down at the low blocks on the like, offensive end. He's like a tennis ball down there playing in the clay of Roland Garros. Odom, long stroke. Karcher wins the battle. Outlet for Barnes, picked off by Odom. What kind of pass is that? Not a good move. Vincent steps in. Reynolds Dean fade away. It's good. Back to a one-point lead for Temple. That was a high-risk pass by Mark Karcher. There was nothing to be gained if that pass was completed successfully. And they wound up losing a basket because of it. And he saw the agony on John Cheney's face. Another turnover. Temple's led by as many as six here in the second half. Sanchez stepping in. Won't go. He's two for 12 now from the field. But he's had five rebounds, seven assists, and three steals in addition. Murphy all the way down. Luther Clay. Oh, baby, what a play. 50 to 49, Rhode Island. The referee stopping action briefly. And now there'll be a timeout. Tony Gray. On the call, this is one heck of a play. Murphy with the lead. And Luther Clay, 180-360 with the score, Rudy by one. Hankering for a great deal on a new Ford truck? Rhode Island, the Owls, firing it up by Dave Sims with Jay Billis. Wide, he got Odom over the back. So Rhode Island is not blocking out. When shots go up, they are just turning their head toward the backboard and going to the board to grab the rebound. You got to turn the other way and go and find somebody and block them out. Good job by Rhode Island to slow down the Temple inside onslaught. That foul is on Odom, his third. Lamont Barnes can't get anywhere near the paint right now. Lam Luther Clay, is, look how far he's pushing him off the lane. I mean, that's good defense. Live posting up. Good job. Reynolds Dean got a piece of that. Long pass. Look out. What are these guys doing? Now all of a sudden everybody is Fran Tarkenton trying to throw deep. Am I dating myself by saying yeah, that? Yeah, just a little bit. Randall Cunningham's now the quarterback okay. for the Vikings. <laughs> Randall cutting him to I, Moss. I knew I, I knew, I knew, I knew <laughs> As soon as that came out, I'm going, boy, that's an old man for you. Fran Tarkington looking for Paul Flatley <laughs> deep. <laughs> <laughs> so
Sanchez had a bad night shooting. Under seven to play live as a dive by Odom. And then line over the back of Reynolds Dean. You know, that's going to be a big call the rest of this ball game if Rhode Island can continue to block out like they did on that play. Letting somebody go over the back is a big call. Sure Slide going up. Actually, there was no block out there. Another another possession when there was no block out. Reynolds Dean just was quicker to the ball. I'm telling you, you got to turn and block out. Odom in a hurry off the pull up. That won't go. He got fouled. Karcher, another muscle rebound. Al's down a point. Into the paint, pull up, tough shot. High bounce, put back by Barnes. Temple leads, 51-50. Dave, you cannot jump for rebounds with Temple. You have got to lay a body on somebody and then turn and go get it. Al's extended defense now. Vincent to Odom. Way too much juice on that one, but they were able to recover. Reynolds Dean, three ball, Odom, line drive, won't go. Reynolds Dean, another rebound. He goes inside, knocked away by Karcher. Let's take a look at where Lamont Barnes is on the floor right now. Here he is over here. When the shot finally does go up, everybody just turns to go, and nobody looks to block him out. He just gets easy position in there. You can't let that happen. You're just giving up points. Back to live action. And Odom will go to the line. He penetrated and drew the foul. Fouls on Karcher, his third, 17 foul for the outs. One on one in effect. 14 fouls for Rhode Island. One point. Temple lead under six to play. Fifty-one all. Karcher's third. And for Odom. Dave, look how everybody is bending over at the waist. I mean, these guys are just fatigued beyond belief. They are exhausted. 18 points for Lamar Odom. And the building rather warm again tonight. Well, this is where hard practices come in. A lot of coaches toward the end of practices try to run some of their stuff, shoot some big free throws to get guys used to executing when they're tired. Gotta beat that mental fatigue right now as well. Pepe way outside. Won't go. Rebound, Odom. Odom with nine boards. He's putting up some numbers. Odom with 18 points. He's got nine boards. Rhode Island by one. Rhode Island wins. They get the automatic bid. Murphy over the top. He hit the big three. Preston Murphy. 55-51 Rhode Island. Great penetration. Again, they're penetrating those gaps and collapsing the zone. And Temple, because they are so tired, they're not quick enough to get out and put pressure on the shot. Good contingent of Rhode Island fans here on their feet. Under five to play. Rhode Island by four. Boy, look at the pace of this game. Temple taking a lot of clock. Sanchez with nine on the shot clock. Broken Barrow with seven. Up top, Sanchez with four. Runner in the lane. It goes, but before the foul, it was on Murphy. He nods his head, saying, yes, you are correct, sir. Boy, that was a bailout. Take a look at the penetration. This is a gap in the zone right here. He goes right into that gap, draws the defense over, and then right up here is where Preston Murphy is going to be wide open, and the defense cannot recover. That's great basketball by Rhode Island. Coming up on a four and a half to go. Here's Sanchez. Back to live action. Karcher up top three. Blocked by Reynolds Dean. Murphy oh, takes play. over. Murphy to the hole. Murphy scores, but a foul beforehand. What a play, not only by Antonio Reynolds Dean, but how about Preston Murphy going after the ball? And right now, the Rhode Island bench is beside itself because they wanted an intentional foul call. Look at the outstretched arms, those long arms of Reynolds Dean. And what a nice play by Preston Murphy. And this was somewhat of an intentional foul. He fouled on purpose, but it wasn't enough to warrant an intentional foul call. That was a smart play by Pepe Sanchez to stop a wide open layup. Murphy can't hit. And Sanchez tied up by Murphy. Possession arrow to Temple. Pepe Sanchez by fouling Preston Murphy intentionally but not enough to warrant an intentional foul call by the official. Just saved his team two points. 
sure you know, enough. And those are the kind of things that are not going to show up in the box score. It's just going to look like another foul. But that was one of the smartest fouls you will ever see. 427 and counting. Rhodey plus four. Temple, the top seed. Biggest lead for Rhode Island this evening. And Pepe Sanchez has got guts. Or what Raftery would call onions. <laughs> <laughs> Inside the Barnes, double team. Karcher, now broken bar, wide down low. Look at Murphy, doing the double team, they reverse. Sanchez, he needs to hit one, can't get it. Rebound, three outs have it. Karcher, back to Sanchez. The way they're offensive rebounding, a missed shot is just an interior pass. And Great it's play. a big bucket by Karcher. Back to a one point, Rhode Island lead. Karcher with 13. Four threes on the afternoon. That's when an offensive rebound leads to a three. And Jim Herrick wants to talk to his team in a 20-second timeout about blocking out. They're playing great defense, but they're not finishing the play by grabbing that big defensive board. Great game. Terrific contest here in Philadelphia. First Union Spectrum. Don't forget, coming up, St. John's, UConn, New Mexico, Utah, and Boise State, New Mexico State. Coming up is Championship Week, presented by 7-Up Continues, right after our game. At the end. This is Championship Week from Philadelphia, the A-10 Tournament Championship game, and it's a beauty. Rhode Island and Temple just duking it out big time here with 3.36 to go in the ballgame. Heineken storyline, Rhode Island. Good numbers on the board. Lamar Odom again getting it done. And how about Temple? 11 points off of turnovers. And Lamont Barnes, he's just ringing him, ringing every ounce of energy out of himself. 17, 8, and 2. Well, it's not going to be hard to figure out the MVP depending upon who wins. If Temple wins, it'll be Lamont Barnes. If Rhode Island wins, I can't imagine it wouldn't be Lamar Odom. 3.30 to go here in our ballgame. Odom sets up Murphy. He can stroke it from there. Won't go. And that'll be over the top. That'll be over the top. Easy call for Jody Sylvester. And Reynolds Dean knows it. That's why a little hang dog right now. He was way up in the air, but over the back. You can see Lamar Odom going high for that rebound. And it was Antonio Reynolds Dean that got the little push. 16 foul on Rhode Island. Reynolds Dean is, in my opinion, a warrior. That guy is one of the steady players. He comes to play every game, takes on bigger guys, and is never backed down in his four years of play. 1,500 points, over 1,000 rebounds in his career. That is stellar. Broken Burrow, haven't heard much from him. Here's Barnes on the double team. They find Sanchez, going to try to lay it up, and he does. Temple back in the lead, 56-55, under three to play. Boy, that was a big-time basket cut by Sanchez. And Lamont Barnes with a terrific pass. Now into the 2-3 matchup. Vincent line drive won't go, Barnes. And he gives it to Sanchez. John Cheney likes to go with that 2-3 matchup zone because it keeps Barnes from having to run that baseline and just completely wear him out. John Cheney wants a 20 and gets it. 2.33 to go. When Lamont Barnes gets the ball inside, he is immediately doubled. Rhode Island does not want him to hurt them. And Lamar Odom has to do more to come over and stop that ball. I want to get this note in, too, regarding the Atlantic 10. We're very happy to see that LaSalle University renewed Speedy Morris's contract for another three years. There was a lot of speculation that Speedy Morris, this might have been his last season at LaSalle. And what a big solid five coaches. move. Uh, you had to be impressed with the way the Philadelphia coaches stood behind oh, Speedy Morris. I mean, Speedy Morris has done a good job at LaSalle. And that was validation that he got his three-year extension of that, that fact. It's not a point, it's a fact. They went from the Midwestern Collegiate Conference into the Atlantic 10. That takes some time. And they did very well this season. They got a good team coming back. Sure enough. 220. Broken bow. Off the glass. A little short. Kept alive by Barnes. 
One point lead, but a steal by Murphy. Murphy going to take it all the way and lay it up, and Roby's got a one point lead. I'll tell you, Mark Karcher's been very loose with the ball in this ball game. In the first half, he threw it away because he didn't make a pass fake. In the second half, right then, he threw it away simply because he didn't make a pass fake. 13 points for Preston Murphy, under two to play. Down low to Barnes. Double team doesn't come. He lost his foot. He gave it away to Murph. Murphy going to back it up. Odom. Jump pass. Vincent turned it over. Travel on tip. Vincent. Trying to build on a one-point lead. The freshman. Tough mistake there. Dave, this is where pass fakes are so effective. Lamont Barnes has the ball here. He's going to throw it out to Mark Karcher, and Karcher immediately throws it here. He's got to make a pass fake there. If he makes a pass fake, Preston Murphy jumps out into the passing lane, and Sanchez goes back door. Instead, it's two points the other way. There's Karcher. Pulls up to three. Hit it! That's a big shot! 59-57 Temple. 120 to go. Karcher with 16. Five threes. Odom, a little bit of redemption. Tim Vincent gives up two, he gives you three. Crowd on its feet. One minute to go. Odom on the floor, Odom to the glass, it won't go. Tipped away by Clay. A new clock for Rody. Now two. Vincent takes it all the way, off the glass, that won't go. Tied at 59. Too much time to hold it for one shot. Shot clock differential, about 12 seconds. Timeout, Temple. What a finish. Temple ball, in out. Rhode Island has been hammered on the offensive boards, but they did a great job on the offensive boards themselves on that last play. 40 ticks left for Jim Herrick. Rhodey looking for its first 8-10 tournament title. It's the most powerful. On the line, and if Rhodey were to win, to make a case for the 8-10, sending four teams, right? Temple, Xavier, GW, and Rhodey. Oh, absolutely. Rhodey would get the automatic bid. Temple is in. I believe that George Washington is in, and Xavier as well. Although Xavier, because their RPI is down in the 60s, will probably have a little bit of an uneasy selection Sunday. But they have beaten everybody in this conference and had some good non-conference wins. There you can see Xavier with an RPI of 63. If Rhode Island doesn't win this game, they're going to the NIT. Here we go, 40.4 on the game clock, 28, shot clock. Broken Burroughs, Sanchez, Live, Barnes, and Karcher for Temple, Vincent Murphy, Luther Clay, Odom, and Reynolds Dean for Rhode Island. And you want the ball in Sanchez's hands because he makes great decisions. Watch Rashid Broken Burrow coming off the stagger and also Karcher. Karcher down low, gets Odom, back to Karcher. Six on the shot clock, he's gotta go, he's got five. Sanchez with two in the air, won't go. Rebound, Lamar Odom with 10 seconds to go in a tie game. They need a timeout here. Timeout, Rhode Island. Rhodey with a chance to win the championship and win its way into the NCAA tournament. Big rebound by Lamar Odom. Temple wanted to go to either Rashid Brokenborough or Mark Karcher down low. They ran a little misdirection. They finally got it in to Karcher, and he kicked it back out to Sanchez. That is a good look. You're not going to get much better of a look than that. It was wide open. He just missed it. And Rhode Island knows now they have got a chance to win, and Jim Herrick calling for a timeout so he can diagram a play. And Pepe Sanchez looking to the heavens. Dios mio. Sanchez three for 16 from the field. Couple options for Rhode Island now. Obviously, Lamar Odom, because of his ability, not only to hit a perimeter shot, but to put it on the floor and break the defense down. Also, you have to watch for Preston Murphy. He is their best three-point shooter. Oh, consider this, Odom, seven of 17. He's missed his last four. 
Murphy five of 12 from the field for 13 points three of nine from long range Odom's two of eight from deep well those percentages are, are neat for us but I can tell you right now that Jim Herrick could care less about those he's going to get that ball to Odom or Murphy you bet don't forget coming up after this fantastic finish the Big East Championship AT&T Big East Championship it's number nine St. John's against number three UConn Mike Tirico and Lynn Elmore standing by Dave, the first order of business right now for Rhode Island is to inbound the ball. I doubt the Temple will pressure the inbounds pass, but they could. And Lamar Odom having another terrific game. And you got to remember, those numbers are in the third game in three days when these guys are absolutely exhausted. Keaton Sanders going to try to keep it away from Lamar Odom. He is the freshest player, probably the best overall athlete on this Temple basketball team hasn't played a whole lot of minutes and he's fresh. Tony Gray letting them get set. Blows the whistle. Here we go. Good Odom. With four. Odom. 30 feet away. Jumper in the air. He's got it. Lamar Odom has won it for Rhode Island. What a. NCAA selection committee determine their fate. Jim Herrick gets the ball to Lamar Odom, his superstar, and that was a shot under pressure by Keaton Sanders. Nothing but the bottom of the net. We've seen him struck it from long range, and what a big moment for Rhode Island. Odom, 21 points, 10 rebounds, 3 of 9 from 3-point range, and this after missing his last four shots. What a job that Jim Herrick has done with this team. This was not a team you would have expected to be Atlantic 10 tournament champions at the beginning of the season. But they have matured into one tough group, and they are one hot team entering the big dance. For the first time, the University of Rhode Island is Atlantic 10 tournament conference champions. On one side, the jubilation. On the other side, the disappointment. Eric, they are in automatic bid to the 99 NCAA tournament. For Jay Billis, I'm Dave Sims. We enjoyed it. We hope you did too. What a beauty. Coming up next, the Big East Championship from the Garden in New York City, Mike Tirico and Lynn Elmore. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. Chris Fowler, this was spectacular. Dave, that guy right there, especially spectacular. 16th double-double of this season for Lamar Odom. He's a special player. You pointed out that was a deep NBA three. That's deep probably NBA where he's going to be making a lot of money next year. Oh, yeah. The Rhode Island, 30 seconds from the final four last year before they let it slip away. Pretty much given up for dead unless they won three games in Philly. Well, I did their game January 23rd against George Washington, and they lost at home. And, and Jim Herrick was down after the game. We had a little talk, and we are picking each other's brain, and we just said, hey, comes down to one guy. If you want to go for it, you're going to have to win the A-10 tournament. Lamar is the man. And he showed up for four straight games. But he has a good supporting cast. This is a team with a lot of talent. They knew if they could come together and finally play like a team in Philadelphia, it could happen for them. They won't have to worry about the selection committee. But this does mean that some team that was sitting Ooh, right there on the bubble. fence just got knocked out of the tournament. It has a tangible effect when a team that would not have gotten a large bid. Is it's the it, automatic bid. Is it bid. Purdue or Minnesota? What do we got in the Big Ten? Somebody's nervous out there. Speaking of the Big Ten Conference, Illinois as an 11 seed, winner of three conference games all regular season.